Hey everyone, just came back from my uh, local hobby store after a browse, or really, I can't really go in there without actually buying anything, but this time I, uh, I saw something new, uh, so I decided to pick it up. Uh, this looks like some MDF terrain by a company that I've actually never heard of, uh, XOLK. Uh, they're out of Quebec, so that's kind of cool. Uh, this is their tanker and cargo uh, set, so it looks like it's uh, one kind of cargo container and a few extra smaller uh, boxes so let's uh let's have a closer look at this so you get this eight and a half by eleven sheet uh just showing kind of what it looks like when it's painted it looks pretty nice um there's no instructions on here it's just this paper uh it does say you can go to their website and get instructions on how to assemble it but i'm just going to go off the uh the photographs this kit doesn't look too complicated so you get uh two eight and a half by eleven sheets of this mdf um laser cut obviously the all the lines look pretty pretty neat. They're quite sharp and they go all the way through to the back, so that's quite nicely done. The the one thing that I do notice uh, with this MDF compared to say um, some MDF from MicroArt Studio, uh, the MicroArt Studio MDF um, it feels kind of stiffer almost, and the surface texture is a lot smoother. It doesn't um, this stuff from XOLK. It's not weak by any means. Um, it seems pretty sturdy, but the surface texture, I know this is a bit rough, uh, not as smooth for sure. And I'm not sure if that's also going to translate when I paint it, that it's going to soak up more paint. It seems a bit more porous, um, whereas the MicroArt Studio stuff seems kind of almost like there's a, a seal or some glue that's kind of sealing the MDF in. But uh, we'll find out how it paints when I get down to painting it. Uh, so let's, you know, let's start assembling it. All right, guys. So I got the pieces cut out for the cargo container. I noticed that uh, everything, you know, fits quite well. All the there's no major gaps or any uh, anything like that. Um, so there's kind of what it looks like. Ooh, the bottom fell out there. Yeah, I haven't glued anything together yet. Just kind of dry fitting it all together. Uh, just kind of going by the the photograph. Um, so these kind of things also get punched out. It looks like there's some something in the center that you can put in there, or I guess you can just leave it like this as a blocked out container but I kind of like the look of whatever's that in there and uh, I actually checked the website it turns out you can use a pop can uh, inside so I have a pop can here that I'll just, I'll just put in uh, just to kind of show you how that looks here's what it looks like uh, with all those pieces cut out and uh, I just stuck a pop can in there so it does kind of I mean it's not a perfect fit for the pop can uh, I mean I, it was designed to fit it it doesn't fit it snugly but I mean you know you glue it down it's it's gonna stay in there and stay put. That's what these holes in the edge is for, is to, to grab the lips of the pop can. Um, so I think that's gonna be pretty cool once it's all spray painted. It looks something different. And you know, I guess yeah, you recycle a pop can. And you also get these uh, two 55 millimeter MDF bases, which I can use later for something on something else that come off the edges from there. So that's kind of cool too. Uh, and then these are the I guess the doors that you would just you know, put on the edges like that just to cover the the pop can ends to make it not look like a pop can anymore. Uh, and then you got these as well, which looks like they go kind of on the ends here. Um, that's kind of the the rim to the door, which is kind of cool. All right, guys, so I've glued uh, most of it together. I haven't glued this end of it just because I want to be able to, like I said, spray paint the can before I actually put it in there just to make sure it gets it all, gets it all covered. Um, and so earlier I said that the can doesn't fit too well in there, and I actually lied. So uh, when everything's glued into place, it actually holds the can quite snug so it doesn't, doesn't rattle anymore. So that's, that's great. Uh, I really like that. Um, so there's a little little details on the uh, on the door here. Um, these little uh, wooden nubs, just to you know, some more details. And then there's even like a little uh, uh, control panel here that I just uh, stuck on where I think it should go. I don't know. Um, yeah, so it looks pretty good. Uh, like I said, so I'll, I'll kind of come back to this once it's painted up, and I'll 
kind of make some comments on how it painted and uh, just gluing it together I uh, this this wood is really thirsty compared uh, to uh, the micro art stuff so I'm thinking that painting is going to be uh, it's going to take um, a decent amount of coats of paint or maybe uh, maybe I'll have to seal it with some uh, min wax or something before I actually paint it but yeah so I'm going to put together some of the uh, some of the boxes and then uh, I'll show you how those look after okay so I just quickly glued up uh, one of the boxes uh, went together pretty easy the details all right, and that's what it looks like in terms of scale with a 28 millimeter uh, Reaper figure. So you know, stack two of these up together, and they should be pretty good for cover. Uh, the only, I guess, comment I have on on these is that uh, the bottom piece uh, doesn't have the uh, the laser cut texture lines on it. I guess I mean, yeah, you'll never see the bottom when it's on there. Uh, I guess you save a bit of laser time, but it would have been kind of nice just to have it all. All texture, just so you don't have to really pay attention when you're placing it down, which 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 way it's facing. But it's just you know minor detail. Uh, and in this kit, looks like you get uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So eight uh, eight of these little boxes, which is pretty nice. All right, guys. So here's the the final look of the the finished uh, cargo container and the little uh, crate boxes. Um, yeah. So I mean, in terms of uh, how they all went together, I think they went together pretty easily. Uh, if, I mean, maybe it's your first time making MDF terrain, you might have some troubles uh, holding things together, gluing things together. But uh, if you built any any sort of terrain before, this should be a pretty uh, should be a walk in the park essentially. Uh, the instructions you don't really need the instructions. They're, this kit is simple enough to do just from the the photograph and um, in the packaging. Um, other comments I have, like I, I keep saying, is that the it's just the the texture is not as, as smooth as I uh, have seen from other MDF terrain. So, the, and judging by how much glue actually got saturated into the wood, I'm you know I'll see when I when I paint it how much uh, how how bad it is to paint or if it paints up well. Um, I think the details are pretty good. Uh, the price is pretty good. It was sixteen sixty ninety nine Canadian. Uh, and like I said, they're from Quebec, so it's nice to have uh, an MDF supplier that's that's Canadian because that means you don't have to pay for some crazy shipping like that. Uh, if you're going to order internationally, I'm I'm sure that the uh, international shipping will kind of uh, may not make it worth it. But uh, if you're in Canada, definitely I would uh, recommend them. I'm. It looks like they can. Uh, if I buy another set of these cargo containers, they can. Uh, with these little notches in the bottom and on the top here, it looks like they can, you know, you can stack them on top of each other, which is nice because I always like modular things that can stack together. So uh, I think I'll, I'll probably pick up another one of these sets, and uh, I'm pretty happy with them. And uh, I, I would recommend them if you can get them where you are or if you uh, are in Canada, you can, uh, I think you can order from their website as well, but I guess uh, maybe talk to your local gaming store and maybe they can get some in as well if they don't already have it. Hey guys, so it's actually some quite some time between this video now and when I actually finished painting these uh, XOLK containers. I did this probably in December or January, and it's April now. Unfortunately, this is when I just got time to make the video. So here it is. Uh, basically, I painted the whole thing, um, based it black, primed it black, uh, did some dry brushing over all the edges in tan, painted the, the container on the inside yellow, uh, did some weathering with the on the corners with these like little silver paint chips, uh, and then just did a black wash over the entire thing. So I think it turned out pretty good for this uh, really simple paint scheme. Um, these are the little boxes that it also came with. So the same thing, just uh, a black uh, base coat, dry brushed, and then some silver weathering and whatnot. Uh, I also commented uh, several times on how I thought that the MDF would soak up a lot of paint, judging by how much uh, glue it actually took up. Uh, I didn't notice any um, overly soaking up of the paint anywhere. Uh, I don't think it uh, took more paint than, than my Micro Art Studio stuff, so that was pretty good. Um, and yeah, so I'm pretty happy how it turned out. I'll probably pick up another one, like I said, uh, or maybe some of, the, some of their other terrain. Um, so if you like what you see, you can check them out. I believe it's xolk.ca. Like I said, they're Canadian. And yeah, thanks for watching.